the, the Alliance for Democracy's The Populist Dialogues. This Populist Dialogues cable cast program's purpose is to advance the mission of the Alliance for Democracy to create a just society based on an equitable, sustainable economy. I'm your host, David Delk. Our guest today is Nancy Mutella. Nancy is a member of the Alliance for Democracy Portland chapter and also hosts another Alliance for Democracy sponsored cable access program called The Water Spot. She's also, or she was also, a founder of the Citizens Group here in Oregon concerned with election integrity, mm -hmm. specifically with the use of non verified voter machines. And she currently serves as the Alliance for Democracy representative with a new organization shut down CSG Coalition. She's been our guest before, so welcome back to the show, Nancy. Thanks, David. Right. Wow, right. <laughs> you said some things I had forgotten about that I was involved with. Uh, yeah. so. Well, you, you've been actively involved in a lot of things over the past yes. uh, you know, 10 years that I've known you. I think probably about 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, you wanted to talk about uh, the uh, only operating nuclear plant in the Pacific Northwest, the Columbia Generating Station. That's right, right. that's so right. I'm just gonna let you launch right into it. Okay, so very few people know that there is a nuclear power plant um, in the Northwest United States, and indeed it's 220 miles from Portland. Uh, the Columbia Generating Station, which is what it is called, is the only plant, as I said, in the U.S., in the Northwest. It sits on the Columbia River, and um, was made by GE. That should ring a bell because it's a similar model to the one used at Fukushima. If there were to be a Fukushima type accident at CGS, all of us downriver, including Portlanders, would be devastatingly affected. And I'm here to talk about the case for retiring the Columbia Generating Station. Uh, just real quickly, the coalition, um, for shutdown CGS includes the Alliance, Heart of America, Sierra Club, the PSR, uh, Physicians for Social Responsibility, both Washington and Oregon, Columbia River Keepers, uh, No Nukes Northwest, and Beyond Nuclear. We have a pretty powerful coalition. So, what is Columbia Generating Station? It's owned by Energy Northwest, which is a consortium of 120, excuse me, 27 public power districts across Washington State, including Seattle Light, Tacoma, and Vancouver, Washington, which is Clark PUD. However, it sits on the Columbia River on the Hanford site, and as such, looms over the downriver populations, which number over one million people, including Portlanders. Energy Northwest, probably is not familiar to anybody that's watching this. It used to be called the Washington Public Power Supply System, WPPSS. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> it was founded in 1957. Whoops was involved in constructing five nuclear power plants during the 70s and 80s. Of the five plants, only two were finished. Most people know about Trojan, which was well known and shut down in the 70s after major startup problems. The other, almost unknown to the public, is the Columbia Generating Station. It was Whoops 2. Um, a, in 1998, an advertising agency suggested that they change their name from <laughs> Whoops to Energy Northwest. <laughs> the next slide, to CGS, what does it do for us? It's been in, uh, in production for 29 years, producing power. At one point, I think it peaked at 10% of the uh, state of Washington's needs. 2005, it was at 5.4%, and now this past year, 3.9%. So it is definitely dropping. 29 years old, has a 40-year design life, mm -hmm. and yet the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has already renewed its license for another 20 years, total of 60 years. Mm -hmm. But, as this next slide says, nuclear power is dirty, it's dangerous, and it's expensive. Let's talk about dirty first. Some nuclear indust industry spokespeople claim that nuclear power is clean energy and carbon free, but the evidence points otherwise. The next slide, carbon emitted per kilowatt, shows all of the aspects of uh, nuclear power from uranium mining to the construction, operation, and the decommissioning of, of, um, of a nuclear power plant. About 11% of the carbon is 
part of the operation, but it doesn't take into account all of the other destructive um, parts of the, of the process. Uh, those numbers don't mean anything to most of us, but let's take a look at a comparative chart, the next slide. Not the carbon-free energy as advertised. As you can see, third from the bottom is nuclear. Yes, it is better than natural gas and coal in terms of carbon emissions, but is several times greater than wind, hydroelectric, and solar. Besides dirty, it is dangerous. The design makes it dangerous. The location, CGS, on the Columbia River makes it very dangerous to all of us. And the radioactive legacy that we all know about. Fukushima versus CGS. Buckminster Fuller, who is a futurist and a scientist, says, atomic energy is a very stupid way to boil water. That's his quote. And indeed, CGS is a boiling water reactor. The uranium is used, that's very simplified, uranium is used to boil water, which creates steam to produce energy through the turbines. So that's basically what it does. Suka, uh, Fukushima's reactor is a GE Mark I. CGS is, is the same, except it's a Mark II. There were minor changes, but it still has the same containment process, uh, the same containment um, uh, design, and that is what failed primarily at Fukushima. Fukushima was foreshadowed by senior GE engineers who resigned and testified in front of Congress about the fear of a containment accident. Quote, the consequences of containment failure are frightening. It is unthinkable that plant operation can be continued on the very tenuous argument that the probability of the accident occurring is low. Well, indeed, a short time later, Fukushima happened. Japan is still dealing with the direct effects, and the rest of the world, including in particular the west coast of the United States, will be dealing with that air and water pollution for decades. It's not going away, as most people believe. It's actually getting larger. There's be becoming more pollution. And for those of you who are out of the Portland area who are watching this show, um, you have, some of you have uh, GE Mark II, one and twos in, and threes in your area. Boston probably already knows that the Pilgrim nuclear power plant is a GE Mark I, identical to Fukushima. Those in Minnesota near Minneapolis or anybody along the uh, Mississippi River below Minneapolis. You've got Monticello, which is a GE Mark III, um, same as a Mark I with minor design changes. And Urbana, Illinois, you're within 50 miles of uh, Bloomington, which has the Clinton power plant, and it's also a GE Mark III. Mm. So we're not the only one in jeopardy, but we're the only one that sits at Hanford, and we'll get to that in a minute. So the next slide is a very detailed uh, diagram of what a um, <coughs> Boiling reactor, boiling water reactor, or BWR, looks like. And the only thing I'm going to point out here is the spent fuel pool. In other words, after the, 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 the rods are used for fuel and they're spent, every two years they take them out and put them in a water pool that's four to five stories above the reactor. Above? Yes. Same as Fukushima. Okay. It w this which is above. Then collapsed. Yes, it did collapse, right. or the water drained out. Mm -hmm. You have to have water to keep those fuel rods cooled, even spent, because they're thermally hot and they are radioactively, radioactively hot. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are on a, a slide now that is called spent fuel pool design. The Fukushima Daiichi reactor is in the picture. Uh, just note, in an interview with the Seattle Times, Bob Alvarez, a former Nuclear Regulatory Commission policy analyst and advisor to the White House, said, quote, Columbia Generating Station's spent fuel pool is similar to those in Japan and could be damaged in a strong earthquake, a terrorist attack, or an industrial accident. The pool sits inside the building, 
several stories above the ground and is made of thick concrete, but it's not enclosed in the kind of containment structures that surround the reactor core. So he underlined the, the vulnerability. So the next slide shows uh, what they call the bathtub curve of aging reactors. Um, uh, these kind of reactors have about a 40 year life and at the beginning there's a lot of startup hiccups and radiation releases and then the quote normal life they move along and do pretty well and then at the end of life they start having more accidents with aging um, parts and so at 29 years we're approaching the end of the bathtub curve so to speak. So what kind of problems has CGS had to date? It's what I call the invisible ele elephant in the Northwest United States, probably the biggest one. And mm. the CGS is? Columbia Generating Station. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Which should be called Columbia Nuclear Generating mm. Station, but they cleverly have yeah. left, left right. off nuclear. So what are some of the problems to date? We don't ever hear about them because it's not covered by any of our newspapers. Safety. In April 2012, the NRC cited CGS management for incorrectly calibrated monitor that measured radioactive discharges into the air. The miscalibration, and of course on the low side, had occurred for 11 years. Oh my God. <laughs> Secondly, electrical fires. Electricity is vital to keeping the cooling going, okay? Electrical fires occurred in 2003, 2009, and 2012. And in fact, they were cited by NRC, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, for these inadequacies, and they have not been fixed yet hmm. that we know of. Aging parts. Two years ago, they were supposed to be shut down for a scheduled 80 days to change out the fuel rods, and it ended up taking them 175 days because of all the aged parts that they came across. We just started um, a couple of days ago into the 2013 maintenance schedule. We'll see if it takes the normal 80 and, days. And you said that they just renewed the, the license to operate for how many more years? Um, it would be 27. Uh, we, we've been going for 27. They were a license for 40 years. They have a license now to go 60 years. Wow. Yeah. That's reassuring. Right. <laughs> Okay, so going further about the dangerousness, um, the next slide is a picture of Fort Calhoun, Nebraska on the Missouri River. Why do I have this? Because the flooding that the Midwest experienced in 2011 caused Fort Calhoun nuclear power plant to shut down. It has yet to be started up again. Hmm. Flooding is a major problem and all nuclear power plants are on rivers or oceans because that's what keeps the core reactor cool has um, copious amounts of water. CGS, Columbia, our nuclear power plant, sits on the Columbia River below the largest dam in the United States, which is the Grand Coulee Dam. Any kind of flooding at the Grand Coulee would affect uh, the Hanford area where CGS resides. Wildfires. Wildfires are a very common thing in that part of the state of Washington. They're an annual risk. This is a photo, wildfires on Hanford Reservation taken last year. One recent fire burned 3,000 acres on the Hanford Reservation and temporarily closed the two highways that went in and out mm -hmm. of the Hanford Reservation. People couldn't get to it because of the fires. Mm. If that doesn't scare you. <laughs> <laughs> the next slide talks about earthquakes. Up until about 10 years ago, they didn't think there were earthquakes over in that area. But in the last couple of years, they've realized and found evidence that one of the largest earthquakes in the Northwest United States, the epicenter was 20 miles, excuse me, 50 miles from Hanford uh, near uh, Priest Lake. And that earthquake could be felt uh, all the way down to Salem. It was so devastating, uh, 7.4 on the Richter scale. Yeah. And Salem being 50 miles south of Portland. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. And the epicenter was uh, 200 miles above that. So 250 okay. miles away, it could be felt. Yeah. It was so strong. Um, just recently, we have, or they have found that Hanford lies on uh, 11 known earthquake faults. 
and it's tied to the Puget Sound subduction zone. So they have built the power plant on a very active uh, earthquake zone. The next slide uh, shows you a, a graphic of the Grand Coulee earthquake, excuse me, the Grand Coulee Dam, and the 1872 earthquake was 20 miles from that earthquake. So I said Hanford was 50 miles. The 20, if uh, the earthquake didn't affect it directly, then 20 miles away was the Grand Coulee. It's an aged dam. It could destroy the dam or breach it, and uh, a tremendous amount of water would uh, come down uh, oh. Hanford, and it is known that it would bury the, the town of Richmond, mm -hmm. or Richland, basically, and would probably um, flood the intakes, the water intakes for Hanford, uh, the, the nuclear power plant. Wow. There are seven dams above Hanford, including uh, several in Canada, and a lot of them are earthen dams, and any one of them could breach and with chain reaction cause a flooding mm -hmm. for that, for CGS. There's also uh, known catastrophic landslides in the Columbia River um, Gorge. Uh, the Bridge of the Gods was wiped out by one um, approximately 400 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it could be landslides that occur. And then, of course, there are human acts of destruction. We call them terrorist acts. Uh, believe it or not, in 2002, um, according to CNN, a warning went just, and this is 10 years ago, folks, so it's not recent. A, wor a warning went just a week ago from the NRC in Washington. It was sent to 65 licensed power plant operators, which run 103 nuclear power plants across the nation. The FBI paid a visit to at least one of those plants, the Columbia Generating Station, the only power plant in Washington state, and possibly other plants that they don't know about. During the briefings of an Al-Qaeda senior operative, he stated that there will be a second airliner attack in the U.S. Again, viewers, this was 10 years ago. There was no specific timeline or location, but uh, CGS was named on their list. So it is not out of the question that a terrorist attack could focus on this power plant mm. because it sits on Hanford with all of our nuclear waste there. Minor things can happen. Squirrels, as we know here in Portland, um, can knock out the grid for a little while. And even solar flares from the sun um, can cause uh, radioactive uh, disruptions. Uh, there are many, many ways that the, um, uh, the plant could be affected. Mm -hmm. Electricity is vital to it. Yeah. <coughs> the reason that we are especially concerned is, is because there's a double jeopardy going on. The Hanford Waste and the Columbia Generating Station sit on the same geographic area. Um, the Columbia Generating Station, which is the nuclear power plant, is less than 15 miles from three of the most critical parts of the Hanford Waste. Um, if any one of these areas had a critical event, an explosion of the hydrogen in the tanks that are leaking, or um, uh, the CGS having a meltdown like Fukushima, any one of those would cause the others to go critical also because all of them require monitoring of the chemicals, the hydrogen, et cetera, et cetera. And if those are not monitored, if, if humans couldn't get to it because it's too hot, then um, everything would be in jeopardy. So not just the Fukushima power plant, not just our waste, but if the waste goes bad, we can't get to the power plant. If the power plant goes bad, we can't get to the waste. Mm. So we are in the most critical spot in the whole United States with our nuclear power plant. So what's the answer? Shut down the Columbia Generating Station for 3.9% of the electricity in the area produced. That's we in the Pacific don't Northwest, need it. right? That's in the state of Washington. Just in the state of Washington, Just, okay. Yes, right. And, and does any of that electricity come over into, into Oregon? It goes through the Bonneville power grid, and so some of it comes to us but it's, um, 
it's hard to pinpoint sure. how much it is. Uh, okay. uh, predominantly, it does go to uh -huh. uh, yeah. Washington. But the point is, it's really a small percentage. It's a very small percentage. And the path to a nuclear free energy plan is very easy. Um, what is it, what's needed? Two things, conservation. Um, uh, the PUD incentives, it's been shown that they can save three to 5% uh, by working with uh, the, the uh, constituents to save that amount of energy. Yeah. So also- Conservation problem. Conservation, absolutely. And number two is, um, uh, wind and solar, and they all Energy Northwest already has wind and solar. If they increase that, that can work. Um, we can easily uh, accomplish the 3.9 percent. Ener the alternative energy startup is relatively short. A nuclear power plant takes 10 to 15 years, and um, Exelon, one of the major energy companies in the world, was able to put up 44 wind projects in 10 different states during the month, uh, during the year of 2012. We can do this. So what can you do? Okay, there's three things up there um, on this slide. Support the closing of CGS because of safety and economic reasons. Support energy conservation support renewable energy sources. And where can you go to get more involved? Shut down cgs.wordpress.com. That will give you specific ideas on what to do. Okay, all right. A and and uh, when you say support, support the closing of CGS, uh, how, how does one actually do that? Do you just go to that website yes. and you've got all the answers there, right. and everything we need to know? Yes. What we're okay. doing is going to all the PUDs that are involved with Energy Northwest and showing them the economics, that it doesn't make sense, um, the decommissioning uh, costs uh, are, are less than if they had to retrofit with filters and so forth from the Fukushima accident, mm -hmm. the required NRC. They have the money to decommission it. It is expensive electricity if they looked at all of the sunk costs and all of the decommissioning costs. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go to them one by one and hopefully people will come to the PUD meetings and support us, um, but certainly writing Congress, writing local, um, uh, the uh, state legislators, as well as Senator Wyden, Senator Merkley, who are um, supporting this concept. Sen Senator Wyden is very involved in, um, and very concerned about the Fukushima okay. pollution. And, and are, are they supportive of closing uh, Columbia Generating Station? We haven't asked them that question directly. Okay, yes. so it would, be, it would probably be valuable if people did contact them uh, say that they do support closing the yes. uh, Columbia Generating Station uh, because that will make your entry uh, easier. Yes, right. absolutely. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nancy, Thanks, for being Thanks, David, here. for all okay. the work you do. Good. Thank you for your work. Thank right. you. Great. You're welcome. So our guest today has been Nancy Mattel. Nancy is the Alliance for Democracy's representative to the new coalition, the Shutdown CGS Coalition. Be sure to visit their website about closing down the only operating nuclear plant in the Pacific Northwest, the Columbia Generating Station. That website is shutdowncgs.wordpress.com. Populist Dialogues is now on YouTube. Go to youtube.com, search for Populist Dialogues, click on the result with the Statue of Liberty icon to view all our shows and to subscribe. The mission of the Alliance for Democracy is to end corporate domination, establish true democracy, and create a just society based on a sustainable, equitable economy. Learn more, visit our national website at thealliancefordemocracy.org or our Portland website at afd-pdx.org. I want to thank our volunteers for donating their time to get our program on the air. So thank you to Roger Bates, Joan Horton, Beth Kerwin, Janet Morris, and Tom Thomas. And thank you to all of you watching today. I hope that we'll see you again next week. Bye.
Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Our group is Healthcare for All Oregon, hcao.org. That is healthcare for every Oregonian. Our plan will decrease the cost of human suffering and death, prevent medical bankruptcies, and decrease medical costs, and prevent insurance company denials. HCAO includes six principles, universality, equitability, accountability, transparency, participation, and public good. Healthcare is a human right.